let's tweak our walk a little bit and just refine a few little things about this walk before we go on to the next step. Now let's have a look here at the feet first of all and you'll notice that we haven't animated anything beyond the main foot bone but there's two other bones here the foot angle and the ankle angle bones that can give us more motion within the feet during the walk. Toes wriggling and moving the ankle up and down pushing the body up or pushing the leg up actually. Let's clear that before I do anything else. Okay, because we want it to hit heel first here, obviously. Now the foot is coming down like a block of cheese over there, like one chunk, and that's pretty boring. And this other foot is sliding up of the ground like it's made out of a bar of soap. And um, that's not really how we'd like to think of Mankandy's feet. So let's go ahead and do something a little bit better here. Have the heel push up and lift the foot up over the toe. So if you look at the keyframe there, and we kind of observe where the toe is sitting on the ground in the front. So make sure that we have it keyed flat on the ground here. And then we go to the to the down position here. And let's say the ankle goes up here at this position. And the toe is still at the same location. So basically it's just that the heel is lifted up between those two poses. And once again, it's still moving up, sliding up off the ground. We can do better than that. And once again, we're going to look at the position of the toe in this pose. See. So if you look here how the toe moved forward, that's not really what we want. So what you want to do is go back and I'm going to use the cursor to point at where the toe was. And then we'll move the foot and angle it so that the toe stays roughly in the same position as the foot is lifting up. Just grab it back and grab it up. There you have it. Now we can rotate the toe down like that, creating a new key. And make sure it doesn't have any rotation here. Clear the rotation. And you have to key after you clear rotation because auto keying doesn't work on clearing rotation automatically. So now it's much better. So now we have to fix this pose because now we have rotations where we didn't have any. So we'll clear those rotations and key them. Alt-R is how you clear rotations in case you don't know. Alt-R is clearing rotations, Alt-G is locations, and Alt-S is scale. So that, that's basically how it works. And we can just scrub back and forward to see if we like that. And it's pretty okay. and we can sort of delay the toes as the foot's going forward have the toes drag a little bit by rotating them down and that's nice because it gives us a nice little shape change within the foot as it goes from the first pose to the middle one which is kinda cool it gives it a little bit more life and we I'm keeping track of which keyframes I'm changing or adding because later on you're gonna see I'm going to have to mirror those to get the other side the other step of the walk So here I'm going to flop the toes in the opposite direction, just rotating them up. So once again, they're trailing the motion. I'm going to leave them flopped when you hit the ground. And I can paste that pose mirrored so it's the same for both feet.
So whenever you change something that affects an end pose, you have to change it in the other another frame. And here we're clearing the rotation on the down position, so it kind of flops down, and it's a little bit more flexible than that uh, than that uh, block of cheese I think I called it before. It's more of a the toes basically trailing and then slapping down on the ground once the heel hits first. So the foot kind of looks like it's rolling onto the ground a little bit. It's just a little bit more lively. Scrub that a few times and it looks like it's all well and good for the feet. You could still tweak it further obviously but it's okay for our purposes. Let's look at what we can do with the rest of the body as well. So here are the arms. Looking at the upper body, we can do some tweaks on the hand positions, for instance. As we uh, scrub back and forward, we can notice that the arms are moving all together. So we can do a little bit better by having accentuating that the um, arm and hand are sort of flopping out on the extreme and actually pulling back the shoulder and the upper arm in the same pose. As it's going back here we can have the hand sort of trailing a little bit so we keep the so let's keep those moving back faster and have the have the lower arm and the uh, hand trailing a bit more just to give it more life there. That's in the past position again we're changing here. And notice because we had our original keys on the keyframe it's very simple to tweak that pose whereas if it was slightly off we would have two poses next to each other instead of one pose that got tweaked to a different position. And so holding down the control key when you're moving keys is very important. So once again I'm trailing the hand and the forearm so that the they're kind of going in the wrong direction a little bit as the hand goes back. And that will give his hand a lot of flop in the motion. His whole arm will seem kind of floppy and flexible. And for some reason I like animating Man Candy that way. He doesn't seem like he's a very um, militarily rigid type of character, so doing this floppy stuff with him is pretty fun. Now, if we had changed either of the end keyframes, we would probably want to select all our keys, copy them, and then paste the inverse, paste mirror to the other side. In this case, we didn't need to, because we hadn't actually tweaked that particular keyframe. So now, so now we can tweak a little bit on the other arm as we're going back we can delay it just a little bit or flop it a little bit forward. Since this is where the whole thing is flopping as he's coming down, it would be fun to have his arm sort of and hand sort of flop out there. And then as they're dragging forward, have them just delay a little bit more than they are already. Just by rotating back the hand backward and rotating the forearm backward. Then we can scrub back and see how that looks. And then moving forward here, we can do that a little bit more. And we can really do that a lot with the hand here. So it really goes through a flourish at the end of the at the end of the uh, step where it goes from one angle to the next. And so that's kind of cool. See how they're really floppy and flourishy now, his hands.
And you can continue that into the fingers if you're doing more animation. So you can have his fingers actually also kind of trailing behind on the hands and smoothing down the line of the arc a little bit even more. We'll show an example of that in more detail later on. So that looks about right. And now we can do a similar thing with the torso. As his body is going up and down, instead of having it all go down in a block, we can start opposing different parts of his body to the motion and getting more arc changes in his body from back to front, which he had kind of neglected to do in the beginning. So we can just work that a little bit here. So as he's going to the up, we can actually have his upper, his middle back, sorry, going a little bit down in that pose. And we could be careful here that when we add keys, we don't like change previous poses. In this case, he had already been keyed earlier, so nothing really changed. And then we can have him trail a little bit as he's going down from the up so he kind of holds the up with his upper body a little bit longer and his back kind of arches as he goes through it. So it's just a little kind of a flounce almost. I'm probably overdoing this a little bit here but just trying to show the uh, principle of it. Really just trying to show that you can do a lot of tweaking after you've done the, f the few basic poses for your walk and you can actually spend a lot more time with the poses here I accentuated that down but then delayed it a frame with the upper body so his upper body sort of keeps on going down a beat after his hips have and uh, have him kind of oppose it when the actual um, hips hit their down position. So the down position for the upper body happens a frame after the down position for the hips do. And so now we have kind of a funny looking walk here. We can go ahead and look at mirroring that to the other side of Mancandy's body.